An F-35 fighter jet requires over 900 pounds of rare earth elements. An Arli Burke class destroyer needs 5,200 pounds. And a Virginia class nuclear submarine requires a staggering 9,200 pounds. Vital to US defense, more than 90% of these crucial rare earth minerals come from China. However, this situation is changing. In January 2022, Linus, an Australian rare earth mining company processing plant in Texas, commenced full operation. In July of the previous year, MP Minerals' rare earth refining and separation facility began operations, marking the U.S. reduced reliance on China for critical rare earth minerals. More rare earth ores are being processed and refined outside China. As a result, international rare earth price dropped by 30% to 40% in 2023. China's rare earth industry has seen impact since last year and worsened in the first quarter of this year. Once profitable rare earth companies in China are seeing decline in their performance. In the first quarter of 2024, China Rare Earth Group incurred a net loss of 289 million yuan, compared to a net profit of 109 million yuan in the same period last year. China's rising non ferrous metals share co reported a loss of 304 million yuan and Shenhe Resources Holding incurred a loss of 216 million yuan. The rare earth division of Xiamen Tungsten Company saw a drastic 65% drop in net profit. China Northern Rare Earth, the best performer among the six major rare earth groups, also saw its profits plummet by 94%. The Chinese rare earth industry acknowledges that the accelerated construction of rare earth supply chains by the US and other Western countries poses a significant challenge to China's market dominance. The bygone area of using rare earth as a weapon now appears to be losing its power. In this global race, crucial to the future of the industry, China's rare earth hegemony is gradually diminishing. Rare earths are a group of 17 metallic elements on the periodic table, including scandium, yttrium, and 15 lanthanide elements. They have a unique physical and chemical properties such as high strength, conductivity, and optical activity, making them invaluable in various applications. Neodymium and praseodymium are used in electric motors for EVs and wind turbines, enhancing magnetism and enabling the production of smaller, lighter and more powerful motors. Rare earths are indispensable in advanced equipment like stealth aircraft, precision guided weapons and anti-missile radars. Lanthium and cerium are also used in petroleum cracking and automotive emission control. Screens of smartphones, laptops and digital cameras require rare earth to enhance color brightness and clarity. In essence, whoever controls rare earth resources controls the lifeblood of modern technology. This is the fundamental reason for the intense competition between China and the United States over rare earths. Before 1985, the global rare earth industry was led by the United States. The Mountain Pass mine in California once satisfied over 85% of the world's rare earth demand placing the U.S. in a leading position in rare earth mining, refining, and applications. However, in the 1990s, the Chinese government designated rare earth as strategic resources and implemented a series of preferential policies to support the domestic rare earth industry, leveraging advantages such as cheap labor and lax environmental standards. China swiftly became the world's largest producer of rare earths. According to data from the U.S. Geological Survey, China's rare earth production was only twice that of the U.S. in the 1990s, but reached 14 times by 2000. So the era of China's dominance in the rare earth industry began. Around 2010, China's rare earth production accounted for over 98% of the global total, leading to severe strategic dependence on China by major industrial nations like the U.S. and Japan. The Chinese government also used this rare earth card to exert pressure on other countries. September 7, 2010, a Chinese fishing boat collided with a Japanese patrol vessel in the waters near the Senkaku Island and was temporarily detained by the Japanese Coast Guard. 
In retaliation, China announced a temporary halt on rare earth exports to Japan. This move triggered global market panic over rare earth supply and made Western countries aware of the risks of over reliance on Chinese rare earths. On January 1, 2011, citing environmental protection, the Chinese government significantly increased export tariffs on rare earths, with some varieties facing tariffs as high as 25%. As China has traditionally not prioritized environmental protection, this move effectively restricted exports and manipulated rare earth prices. As expected, rare earth prices soared afterwards, sometimes rising three times in a single day. The price of neodymium could exceed 100,000 USD per tonne in 2011, a huge increase from previous levels of a few thousand dollars per tonne. The skyrocketing prices led to production halts in downstream enterprises, resulting in heavy losses for Western countries. The United States was forced to resume rare earth production, and countries like Australia and India, which previously did not only occasionally mine rare earth, gradually organized rare earth production. The Mountain Pass mine, dormant under the ownership of the Molly Corp company for nearly a decade, was revived. To counter China's weaponization of rare earths, the United States, Japan and the European Union accused China's rare earth export measures for violating WTO rules in 2012. In 2014, WTO panel ruled against China. In early 2015, China abolished export tariffs on rare earths, causing prices to quickly halve. As a result, the two major rare earth giants in the US, Molly Corp, unable to repay loans, filed for bankruptcy, while the possibility of a Chinese acquisition loomed over Magna Quinch. The US completely lost its rare earth mining and refining capabilities, relying almost entirely on imports, with 91% coming from China. Through this incident, Western societies have awakened to the fact that China is not a trade partner who adheres to market rules and business ethics, but rather a rogue state that resorts to any means for profit. So the United States and Western allies closely cooperate and take multiple measures to overcome China's rare earth monopoly. This includes the United States developing its domestic rare earth resources and joint initiatives with allies to construct rare earth supply chains. The Mountain Pass Rare Earth Mine in California is an example. This mine, which once dominated global rare earth supply in the last century, was shut down in 2002 due to Chinese impact. In 2012, with support from the U.S. government, MP Materials in the U.S. restarted the mine. In 2020, the company signed a long-term supply contract with the U.S. military. MP Materials leveraged the capital market to secure over 1 billion USD in financing for expanding rare earth mining and refining facilities. In July of last year, the company completed the entire process from mining to extracting high purity rare earth metals, achieving mine to process integration. This significantly enhanced America's self sufficiency. The refined rare earth metals is exported by Japan's Sumitomo Corporation to countries like Vietnam and the Philippines for metal processing, ultimately used in manufacturing products such as permanent magnets. It is projected that by 2025, MP Materials will establish a complete rare earth supply chain, at which point the US will no longer rely on Chinese rare earth for permanent magnet production. The US and Japan have formed a strategic partnership focusing on supporting Australia's Linus Rare Earth. Linus, the world's second largest rare earth producer, owns the Mount Weld mine in Australia and the refining facility in Kuantan, Malaysia. Its rare earth products do not pass through China. After the Fukushima earthquake in 2011, Japan signed a long-term supply contract with Linus and provided financing to help expand its production capacity. With funding from the Pentagon, in January 2022, Linus officially commenced heavy rare earth processing in Texas. Linus also partnered with American company Blue Line Corp to build rare earth alloy and permanent magnet factories in Texas, forming an integrated supply chain from mines to magnets. According to data from the U.S. Geological Survey, U.S. rare earth production reached 43,000 tons in 2022, 
tripling compared to a decade ago. Benefiting from the US-led supply chain restructuring, Western countries' dependence on Chinese rare earth is decreasing. According to industry data, the second half of 2022, through cooperating with allies and developing domestic resources, Western groups conducted extensive research and development on rare earth alternative materials. They aim to reduce reliance on rare earth through technological breakthroughs. Toyota in Japan developed a new type of motor that reduces rare earth usage by 50%. General Electric in the U.S. utilizes ferrite materials to produce rare earth free permanent magnet motors. The European Union initiated research programs like Horizon 2020 to look for breakthroughs in rare earth recycling and utilization. After more than a decade of joint efforts, Western countries led by the U.S. have made significant progress in de chinifying rare earths. The U.S. is expected to achieve complete independence from China's rare earth industry chain by 2027. As the rare earth supply increases in countries like the U.S., Australia and Canada, more customers choose to purchase from non-Chinese channels. In March 2023, two large rare earth procurement deals worth nearly 1 billion USD in total from South Korea completely skipped over Chinese suppliers. According to custom data, China's rare earth exports decreased by 24% in 2022, marking three consecutive years of decline. It is worth mentioning that Linus rare earth experienced decline in production in 2022 to 2023 due to upgrades at its Malaysian plant. However, it is expected to rebound strongly in 2024. According to estimates, this could lead to a further decrease in China's global market share of rare earth to below 68%. On the supply side, China also faces severe challenges. Due to years of excessive mining, China's rare earth reserves are declining at an alarming rate. Between 2013 and 2020, proven reserves decreased by as much as 20%. Although China currently has proven rare earth reserves of 44 million tonnes, accounting for 40% of global reserves. However, in some key varieties such as heavy rare earths, China's reserves are already very low. Predictions suggest that if current mining intensity is maintained, China may become a net importer of heavy rare earths after 2040. At that time, the U.S., with discoveries in places like Wyoming, will surpass China in the global share of rare earth reserves. What's more troubling for China is that as reserves decline, the gap between supply and demand for rare earth is widening. In 2020, China's supply-demand gap for the heavy rare earth element, dysposium, was close to 80%, and the gap for some light rare earth elements like neodymium and praseodymium was also over 40%. By 2040, it is expected that apart from a few varieties, all other rare earth elements will face supply shortages, with gaps for critical varieties like neodymium and dysposium exceeding 80%. At the same time, Western countries are intensifying their exploration and development efforts for global rare earth resources, From the United States to Greenland, from Mongolia to the Pacific seabed, a series of newly discovered rare earth deposits are poised to reshape the global rare earth landscape, further weakening China's monopoly. Most notably, in 2022, rare earth deposits were discovered in Wyoming, USA. According to exploration by local company Rare Element Resources, the Brook Coal Mine in the state contains 220,000 tons of heavy and magnetic rare earths. This deposit is expected to enable the U.S. to reclaim a dominant position in rare earth supply. It is projected that by 2027, the Brook Mine will have an annual production capacity of 40,000 tons of rare earth oxides. Apart from Wyoming, a significant progress has been made in exploration in other parts of the U.S. A recent report from the U.S. Geological Survey shows considerable rare earth resources in states such as Alaska, Nevada, and California. The Boca Mountain deposits in Alaska has an ore deposit grade of up to 7% and is expected to become an important source of rare earths for the U.S.
Outside of North America, Greenland is emerging as a treasure trove of rare earth resources. In 2023, the Australian mining company Tambrese obtained a mining license from the Greenland government and began mining rare earths in the southern part of the island. The Tambrese deposit is estimated to contain 19 million tonnes of rare earth oxides, with 30% being highly valuable heavy rare earths. Thanks to technological advancements, the extraction cost of this project has been reduced to 40 million USD. In recent years, European countries have also been buzzing with news of rare earth discoveries. In January 2023, the Swedish national mining group LKAB announced the discovery of Europe's largest rare earth deposits in the northern city of Kiruna. Preliminary exploration indicates that deposit has a depth of over 1,000 metres and reserves of up to 1 million tonnes, which can meet the EU's rare earth demand for decades. In Australia, Arafura Nolan's rare earth mine projects is progressing smoothly. Located in the Northern Territory, the deposit has a grade of up to 6%, ranking among the world's best. More importantly, the mine is rich in key rare earth elements such as neodymium, praseodymium, terbium, and dysposium potentially filling the gap in the Western rare earth sector. With support from the Australian and Japanese governments, the Nolans project has entered the construction phase and is scheduled to start production in 2025. With a designed annual output of 21,000 tonnes of rare earth oxides, at that time Australia is expected to rank among the top three rare earth suppliers globally. In Asia, Mongolia undoubtedly stand out as an emerging rare earth resource country. According to estimates by the US Geological Survey, Mongolia's heavy rare earth reserves are as high as 31 million tons, ranking second globally. In 2022, with the assistance of the Australian mining company, Parabellum Resources Limited, Mongolia discovered rare earth deposits in the South Gobi province. The Kokor rare earth metal deposits has reserves of up to 2.2 million tonnes, with neodymium and praseodymium accounting for 20% or about 440,000 tonnes, enough to produce 1.1 million stealth aircrafts meeting global military demands for decades. With this rare earth soil in Mongolia, Western countries are showing interest. Germany, France and the UK made frequent visits to Mongolia, with Germany providing substantial assistance to strengthen bilateral cooperation. Japan and South Korea are directly involved in rare rare earth development in Mongolia. They're invested in mining equipment and refining technology and jointly establish a rare earth purification plant in Mongolia with Australia. It is reported that this plant, using the latest Korean technology, has achieved a purification rate of over 85%. Meanwhile, Mongolia is also in discussions with the UK to establish air routes for direct transportation of rare earth products to the west via Kazakhstan, bypassing China and Russia. In the Southern Hemisphere, Vietnam boasts abundant iron-type rare earth resources. Compared to other types of rare earth deposits, these deposits are easier to mine and extract with lower cost and rich in high-value medium and heavy rare earth elements. Based on these advantages, Vietnam, with its second largest rare earth reserves globally, has attracted investments from Western countries including the US and Australia. The U.S. promotes rare earth development in Vietnam as an important part of the Indo-Pacific economic framework in hopes of gaining more initiative in the rare earth supply chain. The Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization of Australia has also collaborated with the Geological Survey of Vietnam to expedite rare earth exploration and development processes. In addition to land deposits, Japan plans to mine rare earth deposits on the seabed. More than a decade ago, Japan discovered over 160 million tons of rare earth oxides within its 200 mile economic zone in the Pacific, enough to meet global demand for 730 years. In 2022, Japan successfully extracted rare earth samples from the seabed at a depth of 6,000 meters and formulated a mining plan. Trial mining was originally scheduled for the end of 2023, but due to the Russian-Ukraine conflict, the British company responsible for producing the pipeline to extract 
sediment from the seabed was busy with war supplies, leading Japan to postpone trial mining until 2025. By then, the Chikyu deep sea drilling vessel will work continuously producing 70 tons of rare earth per day and an annual output of 25,000 tons, which will have a profound impact on the global rare earth supply. All these developments have accelerated the demonopolizing in the global rare earth market with new deposits in Mongolia, Greenland, the Pacific, the traditional pattern of China-dominated Western-dependent rare earth supply will be completely shattered. In this competition, crucial to the future of global technology and military power, the West is taking the lead.